The sunset of the Soviet era directly reflected on the position of the Church, including in Ukraine. On the one hand, it was a time of the faith revival and mass construction of churches. But on the other hand, the growth of nationalism in the west of the country and large-scale seizures of temples by Unites and descendants autocephalists. Filara Danisenka, who for many years was the rightful metropolitan and head of the Ukrainian Exarchate of the Russian Orthodox Church, reviled both seizures and gracelessness of the hierarchy of the autocephalous church. He stated in particular, because a layman cannot do this, but only a priest or a bishop. The sacrament of the Holy Communion is also invalid. This is not the body and blood of the Saviour, but ordinary bread and wine, and therefore no one should be tempted by this autocephaly. In general, this Church was not created to save human souls, but in order to fight, to be a political tool against Moscow. That's why they need this autocephalization of the Church. In 1990, Russian Patriarch Pimen died, and the election of the new primate was held. Filaret was among the contenders and hoped to win, with the help of the communists, but he ranked only third. Then he demanded the status of full autocephaly for the UOC, hoping to lead, if not Russian, then at least the Ukrainian Church, which in 1990 received a letter missive from the Russian Orthodox Church. It was written in it that from now on, this Church receives broad powers of autonomy and full administrative independence. Московские все Руси благословляем через настоящую грамоту силою Всесвятого Духа быть отныне православной украинской церкви независимой и самостоятельной в своем управлении. In November 1991, the UOC Council was convened, where Filaret forced all the bishops of the UOC to sign a petition for autocephaly. However, the Orthodox people of Ukraine were not ready to break the prayer relationship with the Russian Church and did not accept the idea of full autocephaly. Therefore, a lot of hierarchs, including the current primate, his beatitude and free, withdrew their signatures. For this reason, Filaret removed them from their episcopal sees. In 1992, at the Bishop's Council of the Russian Orthodox Church in the Danilov Monastery, most of the hierarchs of Ukraine expressed their distrust of Filaret. He was accused of dictatorship and Aryan hand administration of the Church, as well as an immoral lifestyle, since the monk is forbidden to have a wife and children. Standing before the cross, Filaret gave the bishop's word to resign. Если я сказал, что я это сделаю, значит я сделаю. Я подам прошение Архиерейскому собору Украинской Православной Церкви о том, что я прошу как бы взять от меня вот эти э, полномочия, права предстоятеля Украинской Православной Церкви и избрать на это место нового предстоятеля. However, Filaret did not keep his word and upon his return said, Remember, I won't leave anywhere. As a result, by the general decision of the UOC bishops at the Kharkov Council, Filaret was removed and Metropolitan Vladimir Sabadon became the new primate. Nevertheless, Filaret did not put up with the situation. With the help of President Kravchuk and the deputies, he decided to enter into an alliance with those whom he'd hated and convicted before – nationalists and autocephalists. This is how the UOC of the Kiev Patriarchate emerged. Out of the entire Ukrainian Orthodox Church, only two bishops backslid into schism following Filaret – Jacob Panchuk and Andrei Gorak. 
On the contrary, Metropolitan Vladimir, who became the UOC primate to replace Filaret, was met at the train station in Kiev by huge crowds of people. After causing the schism, Filaret's rhetoric changed dramatically from pro-communist to nationalist. He began to extol everything he used to criticize fiercely. For disobedience to the Church, Filaret was defrocked in 1992. In 1997, he was excommunicated and anathematized for his schismatic activities. The punishments for Filaret were recognized by absolutely all local churches and, first of all, by Constantinople. In 1992, Patriarch Bartholomew sent a letter to Patriarch Alexei stating the decision on Filaret. Our Holy Great Church of Christ, recognizing the full and exclusive competence of your most holy Russian Church in this matter, synodically accepts the decision on the above. In 1997, Patriarch Bartholomew wrote to the Primate of the Russian Church concerning Filaret's anathema. Having received the notice about this decision, we have informed the hierarchy of our ecumenical see about it and asked them henceforth to have no church communion with the aforesaid persons. All Filaret's letters to Fanar with an appeal and request to take him under its wing remained unanswered. Constantinople recognized the Metropolitan of Kiev, the head of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, as the canonical first hierarchy in Ukraine. In 2008, when Ukraine celebrated the 1020th anniversary of the Baptist of Rus, Patriarch Bartholomew served in Kiev with Patriarch Alexei of the Russian Church, head of the UOC, his beatitude Vladimir, and other Russian and Ukrainian hierarchs. In 2016, in Shambhazi, at the synaxis of primates of the local Orthodox churches, Patriarch Bartholomew called his Beatitude to Nufri the only canonical first hierarch in Ukraine. In 2014, the Euromaidan took place in Ukraine. Pro-nationalist forces came to power, who headed for the support of schismatics and the destruction of the canonical church. In 2016, when the Ukrainian Orthodox Church organized a large-scale all-Ukrainian cross-procession with a prayer for peace from the Pochayev and Sviatogorsk Lavras to the Kiev Pechersk Lavra, nationalists blocked the procession, mined roads and staged provocations against the participants in the procession. When the procession was approaching Borispol with the Svatogorsk icon of the Mother of God, only the intervention of the police saved the believers from massacre. Nationalists, who could not reach the believers, began to throw eggs at the icon. The priest had to take off his vestments and shield an image with them. President Poroshenko, who for many years was a parishioner of the canonical church, changed dramatically his attitude to the UOC towards the end of his term and upcoming new presidential elections, choosing to side with nationalists. He began to receive Holy Communion from the Greek Catholics and then took several steps to create a new church. His political technologies did not hide the fact that the project of the new religious structure was just a political election tool. Можна сказати, що це передвиборча технологія, звичайно, і те, що це буде правдою, тому що за єдину помісну церкву в Україні виступає 36% населення. Порошенко himself positioned the issue of the new church on a par with political projects, which in his opinion were to ensure his victory in the elections. І для мене це справа утвердження незалежної помісної церкви такої ж логи, як здобуті без віз, угоду про асоціацію з Євросоюзом, як наша спільна з вами боротьба за членство в Євросоюзі та членство в НАТО, які ще попереду. 
In 2016, the Parliament voted in favor of the bill on the petition of the Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine to His Holiness Bartholomew, Archbishop of Constantinople and New Rome, Ecumenical Patriarch, on granting autocephaly to the Orthodox Church in Ukraine. Let's recall once more who the initiators of the appeal are. Parliamentarians Parubi, Wysotsky, Levus, Knezitsky, Mateusz, Jelenski, Demchak. Almost all of the authors of the petition are Greek Catholics and have absolutely nothing to do with orthodoxy. In April 2018, after his journey to Fanar, Poroshenko announced that he had agreed with Patriarch Bartholomew on the creation of a new church. Poroshenko put the hierarchs of the canonical church under severe pressure to force them to unite with schismatics under the leadership of Fanar. The bishops were summoned to the security service of Ukraine for interviews and interrogations. Corrupt activists were sent to the diocese and administrations who shouted threats and insults. The Ukrainian media ventilated provocations that many hierarchs were reportedly ready to unite with schismatics from the Kiev Patriarchate and Autocephalous Church. However, on December 15, 2018, when the so-called Unification Council began in St. Sophia Cathedral of Kiev, out of 97 bishops of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, only two appeared. And only one of them, Simeon Shostatsky, was the ruling bishop from Vinitsa, a close friend of Poroshenko, whom the then president had promised the post of primate of the new church structure. All statements of both Fanner and former President Poroshenko on the unification of total Ukrainian orthodoxy turned out to be a lie. No unification occurred even between the schismatics from the Kiev Patriarchate and the Ukrainian Autocephalous Church. In the new structure, each city ended up with having two dioceses of the Oku and two ruling bishops. In Vinitsa, where Simeon Shostosky comes from, there being even three of them. The canonical Ukrainian Orthodox Church has not changed in any way. It is still twice as big by the number of parishes, while by the number of monasteries and monks, by ten times. However, Poroshenko, in the last months of his reign, gave the command to forcible integration into the new structure. In the villages, local authorities received a command to hold meetings of all village residents under the guise of a church community meeting and transfer them to the new church. As a result, the church community would usually gather in their temple and resolve to stay in the canonical church, while the community of the village, which included Uniates, Protestants and Atheists, would gather at the club and decide to forcibly transfer the temple to the new church. With the help of the police and radicals, temples were seized. The locks were cut down by a grinder, a chainsaw or broken with crowbars. Believers of the UOC were expelled from their temples by force. Many people were injured in collisions. Due to the raid attacks, dozens of parishes have to pray now in private homes, barns, garages or simply under a canopy. While the canonical church maintained its unity under tremendous pressure from the authorities, the newly formed structure split. Filaret Denisenko with several bishops left the Oku and began to lead the Kiev Patriarchate. 
In relation to Epiphany Dumenko, Filaret stated that, albeit he was under anathema, Epiphany and other members of the new church are not even priests. From the first steps of creating the OKU, Epiphany and the head of the Ukrainian unit Svetoslav Shevchuk developed a cooperation map. Epiphany Domenka told reporters that the key to the unity of the OKU and the units lies in Rome and Constantinople. On September 22, 2019, in Vinitsa, three bishops of the OKU, including Simeon Shostatsky, took part in a joint procession with Catholics and Uniates. On October 14, in the city of Varaz, Catholic priest Vasily Plachotka prayed with Epiphany Dumenka and other members of the Orthodox Church in the altar of an Orthodox temple. On November 4th, in the village of Germakovka, Ternopol region, the rector of the local Oku temple, Vladimir Stefanko, prayed at the festive service of the Greek Catholics together with the Uniad bishop, Dmitry Grigorak, and Greek Catholics clergy. At the same time, the canonical Ukrainian Orthodox Church every year is gaining more and more support from the Ukrainian people. The attacks and pressure of the authorities, their obvious support for the schismatics give opposite results. Even more people are turning to the canonical church. Communities whose temples were taken away from them are building new ones. Whereas in 2018, 250,000 believers participated in the cross procession in Kiev dedicated to the Baptism Bruce Feast, in 2019 there were already 300,000 participants. A huge credit should be given to the primate of the UOC, his beatitude on Ufri. He does not make political statements, does not condemn anyone, he only speaks about faith and salvation. Therefore, one can safely say that despite all the Thomas-driven storms, despite Fanner pushing through the recognition of the Oku in Greek churches, the Ukrainian Orthodox Church continues its development with the Ukrainian people coming along with their church and her primates. <laughs>